Hey folks, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we've got a viewer request. The other day, Zulfari Harati commented, thanks for your explanation, and he's got a question in mind. Is K40 a complete bipartite graph? And that's a good question. It's a type of graph that's sort of dull and uninteresting because it's got all isolated vertices, but the question is interesting because it really forces us to sort of drill down and understand our definitions. So let's talk about isolated vertices in bipartite graphs and complete bipartite graphs and if these definitions allow for such a thing to happen. Super quick recap, remember that a bipartite graph is a graph whose vertices can be partitioned into two partite sets, often called V1 and V2, such that you could formulate this two ways. One way is to say it's bipartite if you can partition the vertices in these two sets, such that every edge joins a vertex in one set to a vertex in the other, or equivalently means the same thing you can partition the vertices into these two sets such that no two vertices in the same set are adjacent to each other. They're called independent vertex sets. And of course, bipartite graphs are not always handed to you with the partitioning already done. Sometimes you gotta put in some work to figure out if they're bipartite or not. Notice that in this bipartite graph, every vertex has at least one neighbor. One of the nice things about this type of bipartite graph, where every vertex has a neighbor, is that the partitioning, this partitioning into these two sets, is unique. We can't take this vertex and move it over here, because it's got neighbors. So then it would have neighbors in the same partite set as it, which that wouldn't be a bipartite partitioning. I mean, we could draw it there, and that wouldn't change the fact that this is still a bipartite graph. We just wouldn't be looking at a bipartite partitioning. Same thing with any vertices over here. This has neighbors over here, so we can't move it there if we want this to be a bipartite partitioning, because then it would be adjacent to vertices in the same set as it. So if we've got a bipartite graph with with vertices that all have neighbors, the partitioning is unique. That's something that you might like. You might like that fact. So then what if we have an isolated vertex? What if not every vertex has neighbors? For starters, the, the main question, is this a bipartite graph? And the answer is yes. It still fits the definition, right? We can partition the vertices into two partite sets, V1 and V2, seen here, such that every edge goes from one partite set to the other, one partite set to the other. And no two vertices in the same partite set are joined by an edge. So clearly this is still a bipartite graph. Only problem is, a bit of a downside, is we've lost the uniqueness of the partitioning. We could put this vertex here in V1, but since it's isolated, it doesn't matter where it goes. We could just as well put it in V2. If we had a bunch of different vertices that are all isolated, you know, we could juggle them all around, put them in whatever partite set we please, doesn't matter. So we've lost the, un the uniqueness of the partitioning. Now that sounds kind of lame, but it's not a huge deal really because the interesting vertices that have neighbors, they still have, you know, they still have a unique partitioning, right? We can't put these two vertices over here just because there's isolated vertices. You know, these, these three and these two still have to be in different partite sets. So that's still been preserved, uh, but the isolated vertices have mucked things up a little bit. Okay, so perfectly fine, right? Uh, a graph can be bipartite even if it has isolated vertices. In fact, if it is bipartite, you can add as many isolated vertices as you want and you're still gonna have a bipartite graph. So then what if we talk about complete bipartite graphs? They have more strict requirements. So can we still have isolated vertices in complete bipartite graphs? Remember, a complete bipartite graph is just a bipartite graph with every possible edge. So in this graph here, for example, we could call this K23. It's a bipartite graph, but with every possible edge. So if two vertices are in different partite sets, they've got to be adjacent. You can see how this notation borrows from normal complete graphs, but it tells us the cardinality of the two partite sets, which is nice.
then we might ask, can we throw an isolated vertex into a complete bipartite graph and still have a complete bipartite graph, like we could with normal bipartite graphs? The answer, of course, is, is no, we can't. Whatever partite set we try to put this in, if we want it to be a complete bipartite graph, the vertex has to have neighbors. It has to be adjacent to the vertices that are in the other partite set. You know, whichever one we, we choose to put it in, we'll see, nope, neither one works. Neither one affirms our hope that it's a complete bipartite graph. It's not. If we've got edges already, we can't add an isolated vertex to a complete bipartite graph and still have a complete bipartite graph. But things get a little weird if we have no edges at all, which of course is, is the crux of the question. That's, that's the main question we want to know. What if we got a complete bipartite graph like, well, you know, that's begging the question to call it that, but we'll call it that, K40, complete bipartite graph with four vertices and one partite set. Is this a complete bipartite graph? And the answer is yes, it is. By the, you know, by the law of the land, by the definition, it is. Because for starters, is it bipartite? Yes, it is. We already talked about that. We can partition the vertices in such a way that, you know, all the, none of the, no two vertices in the same set are adjacent to each other. Just so happens that one of the sets is empty, but that's fine. So it is bipartite. In order for it to be a complete bipartite graph, it has to be bipartite and it has to have every possible edge. And with this partitioning, it fits that requirement too, because vertices can only be adjacent, and in a complete bipartite graph, they have to be adjacent if they're in different partite sets. There are no vertices in different partite sets, so this graph doesn't have to have any edges, and it doesn't. So it fits the bill. It's a complete bipartite graph. Now, one point for some possible confusion I want to clear up. You might think, Okay, you know, so we could have four isolated vertices, right? Two in V1 and two in V2, and this is a bipartite graph. And then you say, is it a complete bipartite graph? Well, you might think no, because it doesn't have every edge that it needs to. Two edges here, two edges here. So it's not a complete bipartite graph. Oh, but, but wait a minute. You know, the, the partite sets we choose to put the vertices in is kind of arbitrary, right? This is the same exact graph we were looking at before. It's just got four isolated vertices. So, yes, this is still a complete bipartite graph. It's just not the complete bipartite graph K22. It's not the complete bipartite graph with two, set, two vertices in one partite set and two vertices in the other. So, yes, it is complete bipartite. This is just not how we would show that. We would have to put all four vertices in to the same partite set. So hopefully that makes sense. It's not the complete bipartite graph K22, which has four edges, but it is K40, as useless as that may be. And hopefully that helps clear up some of the definitions. But I will say, I would be surprised if there was not some paper or even numerous papers that found it useful for their purposes to define bipartite graphs with isolated vertices out of existence. If just for their purposes, they wanted to say that a bipartite graph will be assumed to have no isolated vertices. I would not be surprised. You know, we, we, we play with these terms a lot. Some people find different definitions useful, but by the prevailing definitions of bipartite and complete bipartite, isolated vertices are totally fine. So hopefully that helps answer your question and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or any other video requests or need anything clarified. If you've watched my videos, you know that I've totally messed up the order of the outro now. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I think I'm like super hungry or I don't know, man. Adios. <laughs>